All right, sorry for that super abrupt ending. Um, yeah, so we got the prettier thing figured out. It had to do with some symbolic links. That's not why you are tuned in here. If you are tuned in, thanks for sticking around all the way through the final video. Um, so we were just getting started with, with author initials. So we're gonna return the same uh, array and but each book object uh, will have the author represented as initials instead of full name. So we're ultimately mapping. Um, kind of hopping back in here. I don't know where we're at. What's our, it's not defined. Yeah, that's not a real thing. So with author initials and that, we also undefined or not a function. Yeah, is not a function. We're importing something that doesn't exist. Do this in a new tab. Uh, so we would have hi with author initials. Let's make a with author initials. And what's this going to do? This is going to take a list of books and it's going to return a list of books. So we're ultimately just mapping. Um, so now we just want to figure out how are we, what's the actual mapping function that will give us a new array with um, an, an evolved or like a transformed uh, format of the string. So this is when I think we're going to be able to use that evolve function that I was talking about, because what we want to do is we want to say, hey, for each uh, object that we pass through, I just want to take the author value and then do something to it. Um, but I, I ultimately want the, still an object, and I just want to manipulate uh, or transform a value or a property on that object. So I think Evolve will be a great uh, tool for this. So again, this will take two steps. The first step is defining an object with keys pointing to functions. And the names of those keys, um, when we get the actual object, we will have uh, that function applied to the value <clears throat> of the object. So with the author, we want to, I'm gonna break this to a new line so we can see it a little easier. With the author, we want to, um, it'll probably be a pipeline because like, what are we, let's look at what we're starting with. We have uh, a string and we typically are gonna have first and last names we have some middle names in certain cases, but spaces seem to be important. So um, we're at least gonna want to uh, split on spaces. And then what's the next thing we're gonna wanna do? So uh, we're gonna write this from scratch uh, point freestyle. So we just are implicitly knowing that we're gonna get, um, I guess a, a string and we would apply it at the end, but we're just going to use point freestyle from the get-go. So we're going to pass the string through. We're going to split it on spaces. And tip in the typical, the most vanilla case, we just want the first letter. Um, but in the JK Rowling case, we want, we would want all of J and K. And then actually, let me look at our spec. Did we say j dot k dot r? Um, interesting. Maybe we don't do. Maybe we do this. Maybe we say, hey, this will be the simplest way to implement this. Instead of j dot k dot r, we do jkr. And um, for each string, so now we have a an array after split, and I would want to say for each element let's map only the uppercase letters. Um, so here's our pipe, we have an array. And now I wanna say we have an inner map, right? We're just, now we just have a map within a map, which is cool. Uh, we wanna take the string and we only want to, let's also do a pipe on this. We'll split on spaces or on uh, just whites, or I don't even know what you call that. We just split it into characters. And so we just want to take, um, reject the ones, and this will also take a function. We'll clear this up a little bit. Pipe takes this, 
open. Okay. And for reject, we will say we want to reject the um, char that reject the ones where to upper. Let's actually do filter char equals equals char. So this will give us. Um, well, that would include the dots actually, hmm. because when you say to upper on a period, it'll also include that. So maybe we actually move to like a regex pattern. Add a little. Just had some uh, Jehovah's Witness at the door, witnesses per usual. Um, so at a high level, let's let's think about this, right? We want to get the J and the K and the R. Um, so I think the regex we would want is basically um, just uppercase letters. So what I have in mind is um, our regex shape would be, or our pattern would uh, be anything A to Z. Um, so let's figure out the best way with Ramda to use that. Um, is there a regex or a match? There's a match, takes a regex pattern and a string and returns an array of the matches. If we open it here, if I just took, um, run it here, cool. Uh, if I, let's go ahead and delete all up to here. I take an A to Z. And I don't think I want, I forget what parentheses do. Um, if I run A to Z on J, K, uh, well, we would have split on spaces. So let's see what this runs. Can I run it? Run. It gives us an array. With just one element. Can we do a G? Run that. Okay. So global. So we would want to run a match and we'd have to join it again. Um, is there a scan? I was hoping it would just be a little simpler. But okay, so we're going to, we won't have to split it, but we will want to match. And we'll want to say any uppercase letter, so that'll be, we'll take each string, that will become an array, we'll want to join it again, so that becomes a string. Um, so yeah, and these are all, I just know that Ramda has split and map and pipe and match and join, and so, and you will too, if you like this kind of workflow and start using it a lot. So at this point, um, we were passing through each author name. We split it. We have an array. We're going to map each first and last name, essentially, or like collection like JK um, into this. We're going to match A to Z, the uppercase letters. We're going to join it back. Um, so for most cases, this will just be one letter. And then um, it's like if we go back to here and we say, hey, instead, it's just Chuck. We run that. We'll just get a C, and then if we um, join, we'll just use regular JavaScript there, chain notation, we just get that string back. So that's totally fine, we join it back. So at the end of this, we'll have a string, and now once that array is set up, then we would just also do a join. There might be a way, a lot of times I've been finding when, um, when I'm writing these, uh, if I have to um, write join a lot, that sometimes it might be better to reduce. So we might look at an implementation like that. Should get a bunch of like undefined function, yeah, evolve. So we need evolve, we need split map, evolve. We need split, we need, what else, match, sort these now. 
What else are we missing? Computers are good. Join is not defined. Let me go here. Okay. It can be a little more. So evolve, pipe, match, join. That should be it. Let's see. Done, test. Test pass. Lovely. So, uh, and one thing we can do too is, is um, celebrate a little more and say, you know, let's do uh, all the books. So we'll do with author, and we'll just do all the books. And maybe we map uh, the, we don't have um, brand imported. We don't need, this is just kind of for fun. And we'll do map author, or we can do, we can destructure it. Author, author. Uh, probably have to put parentheses around that. Next, let's just look at this output, see all of the author names. Nice. So this would be Donna Tart, David Foster Wallace, Chuck Palahniuk, and J.K. Rowling. Um, cool. So we'll call that good. Uh, and then I wanted to take a quick look to see if this is reducible. So we, what we would have is an author and split it. Hmm. Let's try that just, just to be a little more, if we can do the same functionality with one method or one function as opposed to two, um, might be worth trying it out. So instead, um, our reduce function would order here. I think it would be the function first still, and then the, the type of the reducing accumulator function accumulator list. So ultimately, where's our reduce here? This will be our function. We want our accumulator to be a string and we're gonna be essentially concatting. So um, I believe there's a concat that also works on a string right here. So oftentimes, I don't know like the purity of it, but um, if you think about a string, it's essentially a collection, an ordered collection of characters. So there. A lot of times languages will work on, uh, well, they will have like similar functionality on strings and lists. So for each string we would want, we would have, uh, now we have a different type of function. We're not just passing in a single element. So we would have uh, an accumulator and an element. So what we would wanna do is pass the element through this and then that'd be the element. Then with the element, we'd match it, join it, and then we would want to concat the first argument, I believe. Concat if we pass the accumulator first and then the result. Yeah, that would work. So I think we can just do accumulator there. Now we have a reduce has a reducing function that will pass the element into, it'll match capital letters, it'll join that array, and then it'll concat. Let's see if that works. A bit of an error. Comma, yeah, comma, and concat's not defined, probably. Mm -hmm. Reduce is not defined, Durr. Reduce. I think that's the rest that we used. Cool. Test pass. So that's kind of fun. I think um, seems a little more like, hey, we're what we're really doing is reducing an array into a string. We don't need to like doing the map join. It's maybe less idiomatic. Um, so in this case, we and we're not we're not mapping as much as. Let's see, we, I don't know if reduce would work as well here because we're not, we kind of end up with an array. We're not mapping explicitly. And so if we did reduce, we're starting with a string. Uh, yeah, I think I'm fine with leaving the join here. Um, in this case, I don't know, is it that much better to have reduce? Hmm. 
It's nice that it uses one less function, but it's probably a similar amount of lines. So I might go back to map. Or saying, hey, map this, join that. Yeah, I guess we'll just leave it. And we don't, um, that, what, that one form of syntax where we have to do invoke it on the end. It's like, maybe that's a little more misleading, uh, but we could also name these and then pull them out. But this is just to show you that there's a bunch of ways that you can think about the problem. Um, and with changing data types, that's a common, common one. So should that be a trailing comma? Maybe not. Oh yeah, so for the last arguments, cool. All right, make sure we're still all set there and we'll move on to the last uh, new spec. So go down, go here, go here. Boom. And uh, we want to return the author names pointing to their books. Books should no longer have author name. Cool. So at a high level, uh, we should say maybe group by author returns uh, an object of author names pointing to book arrays. I plan on one test. This will be group by author. We'll also do um, just three. Well, actually, let's do to seven so we make sure that um, we get, oops. So three would be, let's see, one. So we'd start with David Foster Wallace, Chuck Palahniuk, and then, or let's change up the order. What I want to do is just make sure that we get an array that has multiple of one author. So maybe we do um, one, let's do zero to four. So we'd get the three index of David Foster Wallace. So the actual would be, zero to four, that'd be uh, four books, three Donatars, one David Foster Wallace. You would expect that to be, to be a book or an object. We would have um, on a tart pointing to an array. Now would include all of these books without author name. Okay, so that would be that. And then we would have David Foster Wallace. Let's just grab this. We would have that. This would be an array. Cool. So we have David Foster Wallace on a chart pointing to an array of books that they wrote. So that is our expected. Should be good. And we would expect those to be the same. And we got some commas brought in there for us. They're like, hey, that's not a function. Group by author. So we'll say group by author. Close that up. Uh, will we need, let's go ahead and put it up here. I don't think we'll need any of the other functions. Um, group by author. This will take a collection. What are we doing? We're starting with an array of books and we want to end up with a uh, an object of strings pointing to array of books. As technically that would be singular. It is just an array of books. Um, so we're reducing, right? We are starting with one data type being a list or an array, and we want to end up with an object. So I think reduce is going to be our best tool for the job. What will we reduce? We'll take the collection. The ultimate data type we want is an object. And then here we'll have a function of some sort. So what we want to do is for each 
element that we iterate on, they will have an author property. And what we want to do is, so this will be something with an accumulator and an element, and that will point to here. Uh, and we should be able to just do something like merge the existing uh, accumulating object. And merge will also come from Randa. Maybe we can be pro more proactive at this point. That will take two objects and merge them together. So that's the first object. Make sure we, I guess that's just gonna be the end. We want that. So we wanna merge the accumulator and uh, a new object, which would be the, um, so the element is going to be a book object and we want to get the author name. And so if it already exists, where we could get, well, uh, actually we could get some fancy destructuring. So here we could get author and just call it the rest of the element. Okay, so we could say, I wanna make a new object that is um, the, either, let's see, it would be, um, I think we wanna do a conditional where it's, we're basically we wanna say, does it already exist on the accumulating object? If it doesn't, we can do, um, and just say, this would be, the key is gonna be the same no matter what. What we wanna look up is, um, does it already have a collection? So we wanna say, hey, get the existing collection or just use an empty array. And we want to, uh, we wanna add, the remaining L, uh, details to that array. And so the best would probably be append. Do we already have, we already have append. So this would say append the element to either the existing array or an old array. Um, so we're saying for each round, find merge two objects the first object being the accumulator the second one being an object literal that has an author key pointing to an array and the array is going to be a co a new version where the new element of like the iteration round is going to be added to either the existing array or a new array and i think that should do it so here's our reducer function and our starting data type the test pass cool so how can we maybe refactor this um, a little more functional style? We might, you know, using pattern matching or this type of destructuring, I think is pretty helpful. Um, we could do something like, I think Randa has a default to handle this type of stuff. Let's see, default to, you give it a default and then, You give it the default, and then if you get null or undefined, you get whatever the default is set to. Um, cool, so let's do default to empty array, pass it accumulator author, so we don't have to use the explicit or operator. Um, and now I think that has to go here, and we need default to. Make sure that passes. It does. Um, so now, and I kind of want to clean this up a little bit. Prettier might override me, but um, so here we're merging an accumulator object with. And is there another way we can do this? Make it maybe a little more clear. Um, and an element to. An existing array or, or append an element to an array. I think that's pretty much fine. I don't know. Like, would it be, um, what other list op options do we have? Chat, drop. I mean, append is pretty much what we want. We want to update an array. We could maybe do, um, 
again, more ES60 structuring. Do something like that. Actually kind of nice. So we're using a little more built-in ES6 functionality. So we're saying, hey, have this author name point to the existing or a new array, spread that and add the new array on. So this is still immutable, still um, a pure function. We just, we're taking a collection and we're transforming it into a new data type, in this case, an object. So, and now we can, um, again, have like, celebrate a little more and run group by author and we'll run the full book set. We'll run this. Look at all that. Boom, Donna Tart points to her three books and David Foster Wallace points to his book and Chuck Palahniuk, his book. And you'll see that none of the author names are in there anymore. Uh, yeah, and then so, you know, say we wanted to have the initials or something point to the books, we could, um, how could we use that, right? Like author initials, we could just pipe collection through author initials and then uh, and then use group by author. So we could say to pipe with author initials, group by author, the pipe. Oh, I don't have a pipe defined. Uh, that's okay. Instead of importing it, we can just, um, this isn't a terrible case where we'd want to say with author initial books, and then here we'd just want to compose it manually. So books, we get the output of with author initials, group by author is going to take, because we still have author keys, they're just in a different format. And so now JKR points to the collection, DFW, DP, CP. All right. So that was um, us taking some new product requirements and implementing, just kind of trying to show the flexibility of how we can use all these pre-existing kind of unit functions to build up more complex functionality in relatively few lines of code. And it is very abstract, like there's not a lot of um, how does split work? How does map and match and all this stuff work? It's just more, it focuses on what I want to happen. And these functions that have been vetted and battle tested and all that are just gonna take care of it. And if I ever need to know how these work and go to the docs or I can try to write my own, um, but for the most part, these are problems that have been solved so many times that we can just lean on existing library code to uh, make really simple and elegant solutions. Um, I really like that I can use this default to instead of having to say like or all the time. Um, you might even, I think you can, let's see, so this would be an object. And we could say author. I know because this would come before. I was going to say, I think if you had this already defined, or maybe let's just try it. Let's say author. This will be dynamic, so we're not looking for an author key. We're looking for an evaluated uh, value, and we'll just call it mm, current or something. And I wonder if we can just do, and we also want to give it a default. Let's see if this works. Um, this would be the current. No, or like I'm trying to make sure the uh, if it auto formats, then it doesn't. There's not something obviously bad, but let's see. Yeah, because I don't think author is defined yet. Yeah, author is not defined, and that's okay. Um, if there there are cases where you can do these like default destructurings, um, in this case it wouldn't work, but that's okay. I think this is a nice demonstration of blending. You know, we, we could do this without using ES6 and just use only Ramda and do, there's a method, for example, called um, or pick. So you pick only the properties that you want. Um, and so that's how maybe we could do uh, just passing in the remaining properties without author. But I think this is a pretty, I almost like the structuring more. And so this is a good balance of 
understand what tools are already available in native JavaScript, uh, and then where where then assessing okay, what can I use some pre-made functions that would handle this pretty well? And yeah, I think that's all I have. I hope this was useful. All the codes on GitHub, and I'll have links to the blog post. So I hope this uh, brings you a lot more clarity and fun and joy in your problem solving and happy coding. See ya.